My name is Carrie King, and I was diagnosed with juvenile diabetes when I was six years old. That changed my life immensely, and my dad always used to say, you're tough, kid, you're tough. And I really believe he was preparing me for the unknown, because at six years old, I'm like, okay, you know. But later on, I, I think I got it. So um, when I was uh, approximately 22, 23 years old, got married and I had my first child. Um, after the pregnancy, um, well during the pregnancy I was high risk because of the diabetes. And after the pregnancy, I underwent diabetic retinopathy, or had diabetic retinopathy and did have laser on my eyes to uh, correct that problem. Um, I also uh, really um, had severe kidney damage at that time. And if you know anything about juvenile diabetes or diabetes itself, um, it pretty much affects all your organs or can affect all your organs and glucose control is very important. Um, Things like pregnancy, well pregnancy and juvenile diabetes do not mix very well. Um, I think depending on each person, you have different experiences. My experience was that um, I got a very, very bad kidney infection after I had my daughter. I had been in the hospital a month before I had her, had toxemia and whatnot. Um, I thought I had a virus, you know, and me, I just kind of tried to brush things off and say, no, 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 you know, I'm just a little bit sick. Uh, next morning, I was delirious and um, long story short, went to the hospital, had a blood sugar of 1700, and they put me in ICU. Almost died, almost lost my kidney at that point. Um, I did undergo some testing and they managed to stabilize it, which I do thank the Lord for because that gave me my daughter's first four years to be with her, help raise her in that critical time without having to be on dialysis. However, the day did come that the doctor informed me I would need to prepare because my kidney function was decreasing. Um, I had to get the fistula in my arm and I began dialysis in, at the end of 1991. And one of the nurses who um, took care of me, she's here today, and she's retired from Deer's Head, which is the facility where I had gone for my first dialysis treatments. Um, I felt like a million bucks after the first treatment. You know, you don't realize how bad you were feeling. I knew I was tired. And I always describe to people the feeling of having end-stage renal disease. You can't explain it. It didn't really hurt. You just feel like you're being poisoned. You feel like you have poison in your body and something is poisoning you and you're dying a little bit each day. Um, went on dialysis, first couple months, you know, it was okay, tired me out. Um, and then more or less the the crap hit the fan, if you want to say. <clears throat> Started having severe pain in my left hip. Um, they discovered I had an infection. Apparently, however I incurred it, these are some of the risks when you're on dialysis, you're juvenile, diabetic, your immune system is suppressed due to the diabetes also. And um, 
Anyway, I managed to get a staph infection in my left hip. Um, by the time I did see a specialist, I was in a wheelchair in extreme pain and, you know, was really wondering, is this going to be it? Um, so they admitted me to the hospital and operated, drained the hip, sewed it back up, sent me home. Well, it burst open. So long story short, I ended up having to uh, have it reopened, packed, and, and it had to heal as an open wound. And if anyone knows about that, it kind of grows back in a, in a V. So I had some plastic surgery and they fixed it. Um, <laughs> those are a few months that um, I remember vividly. And I wrote a letter to my daughter because I believed I was gonna die. I couldn't eat, couldn't walk. Um, was in a wheelchair and I, every time I had to go to dialysis, sometimes I had to take transportation. And I thought, dear Lord, how much longer? You know, how much longer? Because I really, I wanted to die then. I mean, I felt like I had no life. I couldn't really do anything. After dialysis, I'd go home and crash. Um, and course lost all kinds of weight well after uh, the plastic surgeon sewed the hip up I did begin to feel better things began to stabilize it did leave me crippled um, but that was okay because I had a new normal which was better than how I was living prior to that um, January 27th, 1993, about 11.30 at night, got a phone call, uh, University of Maryland. I'd been on the transplant list, on the cadaver list. Um, they said, we have a kidney for you. I said, you have a kidney for me? So what about the pancreas? You told me you were gonna get me a pancreas too. <laughs> Oh, we got that. We got that. We need you to come right away. So rode up there about seven o'clock the next morning, went downstairs and um, it was a nine hour operation. Uh, when I was wheeled into the operating room, as I went through the doors, I'll never forget it. I felt a sense of peace come over me, and I have a great faith. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for my Lord, who I choose to call Jesus, God, and I really believe he was with me. And when I came out of that operating room, I did not have diabetes anymore. And my kidney worked right away. It was almost a perfect match. At the time they matched it by antigens and there was like six antigens and mine was five. And uh, the ironic thing about it was that when I had been little and after I had been di diagnosed with juvenile diabetes, I had prayed every night. I prayed and I didn't understand because I said, God, I know you can heal anything and you can, you can heal me. I know you can heal me. Why do I have to be a diabetic? You know, and of course now I'm older, I'm like, why not? A lot of people, you know. And anyway, I prayed that every night until I was 10 years old. And then I accepted that this was going to be my life and how normal it was going to be. But when this happened, 
I knew this was my personal answer to my prayer. I knew that. And my pancreas is still working to this day. Um, all I can say is it's amazing. It's amazing. So afterwards, um, I'm not going to say there haven't been some bumps in the road. I never rejected those organs. There have been some bumps in the road. I have some cardiac issues. Got a left hip replacement to uh, to kind of, you know, get rid of the bad limp I have. Had a right knee replacement along the way also. Um, my daughter is beautiful. She's 27 now. Married. Gift from God. Little miracle baby. Three pounds, 14 ounces when she was born. Um, and about Two years ago, I guess, they told me that my kidney was failing. And you go through a grieving process. And I was like, oh, how could this happen, you know? But really, I mean, I had, had 19 years with a cadaver kidney. That's pretty awesome. But I was scared because of everything I went through before. So I had to accept it, had to start the process again and get all the apparatus in your arm and go through all that. And uh, I was on dialysis about a year and a half here in Salisbury. But I'll tell you, things have come a long way. They got wood floors, <laughs> hard wood floors and TVs and, you know, First time around, we were in this big gray room. Everybody just sitting there. Mm. You know, you brought a book or you, a Walkman at the time, you know. It was really, I mean, that was just kind of emotionally, you know, made you wacky. But anyway, um, went through the testing and I was on the cadaver list. And of course, this time around, the list was a lot more, you know. I had been told, gee, if you're getting a kidney and a pancreas, usually you don't have to wait as long for some reason as just a kidney. So that's where my pancreas was still working. So, you know, maybe it's good I was still on immunosuppression for that. But anyway, I was on the cadaver list, and they have the new paired program that Dr. Swanson had talked about. And I said, wow, man, this sounds great. So, you know, with social media and whatnot, I kind of was telling my story to my friends and whatnot. And one of my friends who I had worked with, this is my surprise, her name's Laura Anderson, come up here. She said, Carrie, I want to help you. And she had been a dialysis tech. And she said, Carrie, I want to help you. I want to give you a kidney. And I was so happy. <laughs> and she went through the testing. We went to Baltimore. And daggone it, she has some <laughs> wonderful, healthy kidneys. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, we got the call. Well, it was December 7, we were scheduled for the, I was scheduled for the surgery, December 17, 2013. It was through the paired program. And we had actually, after we had all the testing done and whatnot, I think we only waited maybe four months. But uh, we had three close calls. And we were, we were like this, and Laura's saying, you know, no, 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 no. They told us somebody got sick. What, what in the heck is going on? Three times, you know. So then I told my coordinator, I said, Lori, I said, don't tell me anymore. Tell Laura not to tell me anymore until we're almost there. And then I would try and go back on it, you know. She tried to find out quite a bit. Mm hmm So anyway, um, as it turned out, this time worked. 
And this is another little miracle because after, after I received my second kidney and Laura's went somewhere in Ohio and I received my kidney from a 35 year old guy somewhere in the Midwest. But my coordinator said, Carrie, she says, I wasn't gonna tell you this. I couldn't tell you this before it happened. She said, the Friday before your surgery, somebody in your chain with this paired program got sick or something happened and they couldn't do it. So everybody in the network looked and looked and looked. And over the weekend, a coordinator in the Midwest found someone who was a good potential donor, went, collected the blood in a snowstorm, tested it, by Monday everything was good to go, didn't have to cancel the surgery, and I never knew a thing, and neither did Laura. Mm -mm. Didn't tell us till we woke up. Yeah. So anyway, this is my second time around. Dr. Bartlett University in Maryland did my first surgery and my second surgery. I probably wouldn't let anybody else touch me. <laughs> See, I only have, I only want the best, you know. <laughs> and um, I love you. you too. And you have, can you say anything? <laughs> Carrie didn't know in the beginning that I had actually started the process. It was a surprise to her after I had kind of almost gotten cleared to donate. The only thing we were waiting for was the blood match. And of course, that wasn't it. But oh, I didn't know. That. I had two perfectly healthy kidneys, 100% functioning, and I wish I could clone them and give them to everybody else. And I have been posting on Facebook every time about living donation donate your kidney, you can live a perfectly happy life with one kidney. I don't even know it's gone. I have, n I don't feel any different. I don't do anything different. I mean, I watch my health, I watch what I eat and I drink and stuff like that, but I'm <coughs> fine. And I wish people weren't so scared of that process because they're all like, well, I'm scared. What if something happens to my kidney? Well, you know, life is life. If something's gonna to happen to your kidney in 20 years, it's gonna happen whether you've donated one or not. And they don't just take anybody's kidneys. That was the most intense mm -hmm. health thing I have ever had in my life. And we were up to Baltimore, what, about three times for different mm -hmm. tests. So <coughs> when I told Carrie, she cried, I cried. And then we just began the process, and it was the best thing I ever did. <laughs>